In this first phenols video, I'm going to look at how to identify phenols. So in other words, identifying the functional group, how to name them, some properties of phenol, and the first two reactions that you need to know for the OCR syllabus of phenols. So that's the reactions with alkalis and with metals. In video two, I'll pick up the reactions of phenol and I'll look at the reaction with bromine and then we'll do the comparison of the reactivity uh, with benzene. So we'll look at how phenol reacts with bromine and compare that to how benzene reacts with bromine. And then the final thing I'm going to do on video two is just look at some uses of phenols. So we'll start with how to identify phenols. So I've drawn three up on the whiteboard. The first one is a phenol. The middle one isn't a phenol, the third one is. So can you see what's making the left hand side and the right hand side one phenols but the middle one isn't? So it's obviously got something to do with the hydroxyl group, the OH group. And you can see in this one the hydroxyl group is attached directly to the benzene ring. On this one here, the hydroxyl group is part of this alkyl group. And on this one, we've got the hydroxyl group again attached directly to the benzene ring. So it must follow that a phenol must contain a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group directly attached to it. So there it is in writing. Phenols contain a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group directly attached. And notice I've got that starred. The most common mistake I see from students is they say a hydroxide group directly attached and that loses them the mark. It, this, is not, this is not a hydroxide ion, it's a hydroxyl group. Completely different thing. Before we go into naming phenols, I just want to share some information with you which will help with the naming. So obviously the molecule on the left is benzene and I'm showing the hydrogens to make this point. If you take one of those hydrogens off so that you can then attach something else, namely a hydroxyl group or other things, then this becomes what's known as a phenyl group. So we may as well go back to those three molecules I drew up at the start. So the first one and the last one are phenols, so I've given them those green ticks. The middle one isn't a phenol. We'll name it anyway, so we'll start with the first one. So this is the simplest of all the phenols, and it's just called phenol. We'll jump straight to the other phenol, so it's this one here. So we've got this phenol group, so that makes the carbon here carbon number one. So where is this ethyl group in relation to carbon number one? It's a carbon number one, two, three, four. So this is called 4-ethyl phenol. We'll deal with the molecule in the centre now. Remember, this isn't a phenol. So what have we got? Well, imagine that was a hydrogen. That would be CH3, CH2OH. That's a very common alcohol, ethanol. So what's the difference between this and ethanol? Well, we've got this benzene ring, which, which obviously has an H missing, so that this ethanol molecule can join. So that's a phenyl group, remember? So where is that? Well, this OH makes this carbon number one. So that must be carbon number two. So this is called 2-phenyl ethanol. So we'll move on to the properties of phenol now and there are two properties that you need to be aware of and there they are listed at the top there. So we've got phenol is soluble in water and it's a solid at room temperature and pressure. So I'm going to use the diagrams below to explain both of these properties. I'll have to change it slightly to explain the second one but you'll see just how similar the explanations are in a second. So the first thing is, I'm sure you recognise that diagram, you've seen it somewhere before to explain other things um, at AS 
and obviously if I just cover that phenyl group over with my hand and we replace that with a hydrogen you'd have two water molecules wouldn't you so hopefully that's triggered something in your memory to explain the properties of phenol or these two properties of phenol we're obviously going to be talking about hydrogen bonding so if you remember the golden rules for your hydrogen bonding diagrams you must show the lone pair on the oxygen so remember oxygen has two lone pairs the dipole must be shown across the OH bond so I've drawn just drawn the one there but you could easily you could put another one there if you wanted to and the final thing is you must draw the hydrogen bond from the lone pair to the neighboring hydrogen so phenol is obviously soluble in water because it can form hydrogen bonds with water and obviously you'd have other hydrogen bonds here and here and so on so just look how easy it is to change the diagram to explain the second bullet point so why is phenol a solid at room temperature and pressure well it's obviously got something to do with hydrogen bonded and gain and remember hydrogen bonds are the strongest of the three intermolecular forces so because of this hydrogen bonding we've got to put extra energy in to separate the molecules remember in when you um, melt a substance boil a substance you're not ripping atoms off you are just separating the molecules from each other you're giving them more freedom of movement and so to do that you've got to overcome these strong hydrogen bonds and that's obviously going to increase the melting point point. and if you're interested the melting point of phenol is 40.9 degrees celsius so at room temperature and pressure i.e. 25 degrees c it's going to be a solid so we're going to look at the reactions of phenols now and there are three reactions you need to know for OCR and they are the reactions with alkalis so for example sodium hydroxide solution with metals and the other one is with bromine and of course bromine's formula is Br2 so we'll look at each one in turn and any observations that you may need to be aware of as well so we'll start with the reactions between phenols and alkalis and phenols and metals and the first thing I want to point out is phenol is a weak acid. So straight away we need to be recalling our acid with alkali knowledge and our acid with metal knowledge as well. And there's a, a simple reaction just to demonstrate the fact that phenol is a weak acid. So the fact that it's weak we need to use these reversible arrows. What's it doing? It's partially dissociating into its ions. And because it's an acid, one of those ions that's released is obviously that H, and it comes off as H+. So the fact that it's releasing those H plus ions into the solution makes it an acid. So we'll start with the reaction with alkalis. So up at the top there, I've got the absolute general uh, equation for the reaction between an acid and an alkali. So that's acid plus al alkali gives salt and water. So the acid in this case is phenol, C6H5OH, and that's reacting with sodium hydroxide, so our alkali, and we get this salt, C6H5ONA, and obviously H2O. Now sometimes you might see the charges shown, so don't be afraid if you see that there, that's absolutely fine to represent it like that. So either way is fine, um, but anyway, that is the salt, if you remember your definition of salt, a salt is formed when the H plus of an acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion. So in this case, the H plus of the acid, this thing here, has been replaced with, you can see there, the sodium ion. So it's a salt. So what's it called? We'll write it up now. So it's called sodium phenoxide. And the phenoxide ion I've written up here C6H5O- and notice that's a 1 minus charged ion so if you were reacting that with a different alkali let's say a group 2 alkali then you'd have to be a bit more careful with the formula of your salt so I'm sure you'll be asked questions about that I'm not going to show it on the video um, I don't want to tell you all of the answers so we'll look at the reaction of phenol with metals now 
So again, the general reaction, the general equation, acid plus metal makes salt plus hydrogen now. And there's an equation for you. I've gone for potassium as the metal. So the salts formula will be C6H5OK and we'd get H2. And again, you may see the um, charges shown for that. That's okay to do that. Do you get, do you get what I did there? So um, what is going to be the name of this? Oh, I've just noticed something about this equation. It's not balanced, is it? So we need to sort that out. So obviously we've got two hydrogens here. We've only got one there. Um, so we need a two there, which means we need a two there, which means we need a two there. I knew it wasn't balanced at the start, you know. Right, so what's that going to be called? Have a think and I'll pop the name up. So obviously that's called potassium phenoxide. Now we'll better look at some observations um, that associated with this reaction. Imagine this was an aqueous solution of phenol and obviously the potassium is a metal, a solid. So we put the state symbols, aqueous, solid. Obviously hydrogen is a gas. Now this is an ionic substance, so it's going to dissolve in the water present. So we're going to get an aqueous salt as well. So observations wise, you can see that our solid has dissolved. And obviously you're also going to see bubbles of gas produced. Or if you want it to be um, show off with your vocabulary, you could say effervescence occurs.